The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we come into the opening bell in 24 minutes. And you want some volatility? We're getting it right now, folks. You talk about a move. As I was coming on the air, folks, this is a one-minute bar. At 8.53 a.m. this morning, we were trading 40 S&P points below where we're at right now. You see the explosion. Let's put it back to a 15-minute. That's just two bars. We get above the price action that we saw basically any time over the close of yesterday. We get some big action in currencies going on right now. We get some big action in yields. But the S&Ps, we climb back into positive territory as I come back on the air. Uh, as I come on the air, up by three points at 36.78. The NASDAQ 100, we're still negative by 41. That's about a third of percent, 11,051. We get the Dow up by seven points. You see the acceleration in all the markets. The Russell up by six right now. Crude catches a little bit of a pop on that move as well. Crude makes it to almost $83 overnight. Right now, we're trading at 85.21. Gold contract back to flat. Why not? Let's jump over to the dollar index, man. We got some moves. And there you go, folks. That is a move for you. From 113.94, we're down to 113 right now in the dollar. A quick drop off. Uh, I'm not sure where the intervention is, possibly, but it's somewhere, folks, because we have some pretty dramatic moves going across the board just in the last few minutes. You take a look at the 10-year. We're at 109.10. We were at 108.26, folks, 108.26. That's correlating to a yield of how about almost 4.3% on the 10-year. We were at 4.2 last night when I was watching my dad's program at 4 o'clock Eastern time when he was wrapping things up. We're at 4.3, and that's 4.3 sitting at 109.10. We were all the way down to 108.26. You have the 10-year above 4.3%. I mentioned the dollar, right? We got moves in the dollar. Let's jump over to the euro. Euro US dollar right now. There's a spike for you, man, from 97 to 97.8 on the euro US dollar. And how about the yen? It just doesn't stop for the yen, man. Almost to 152 on the yen. And just since 8.30, some wild volatility in the currencies affecting the yields, affecting uh, the overall markets, to say the least, as the S&Ps climb into positive territory, up by four points right now on the S&Ps as we climb. 36.80 on the S&Ps, made it to almost 36.40 overnight. The highs of yesterday morning, 37.44. When you take a look at the Fibonacci basis, folks, let's take a look at it because we're beginning to climb. Right at the 382 right now, 3683 as we go through it. If you're looking for the 618 of that move, and again, that is just from yesterday's high, which is about 3750. Pretty remarkable. You're talking about 110 S&P points. The moves we're getting in both directions are remarkable right now, folks, in a big way. Uh, and we do have something going on like an intervention, yeah. Um, because these currencies are just moving in dramatic fashion with the S&Ps now up by 13, NASDAQ up by 2. I've been talking about the currencies, folks. Our man Teddy Kegstad, he's got a great webinar going on for the Tiger Forex Report next Wednesday. And you got to keep your eye on what's happening with these currencies because they are driving so much of the action as the dollar just dropped a full point from 114, we'll call it, to 113, as I mentioned. You got euro spiking to 97.8 from 97. Pound has its own deal going on, as we all know. Even the pound getting a little bit of a bid back there to 111.6. We were down at 110.60. Things were falling apart this morning. Uh, I'm not sure, so sure it's going to hold completely. We'll find out what's going on as we creep through the hour this morning because this has just happened in the last 15 minutes or so, folks. We're getting some action, not surprising, on a Friday coming into uh, a very volatile market. We jump over to the volatility index this morning. Volatility index, you wouldn't know what's happening in this market with what's going on in the VIX right now, man. We were at 3040. You just got an acceleration of about 50 S&P points, and the VIX barely moves to 3006. Uh, yeah, and we'll see where we go from there. We get the opening bell in about 19 minutes from right now. All right, jumping around to some of the action we have going on. How about Snapchat? Tough go around for Snapchat, to say the least, man. They are going to open down about 25%. This thing just does not stop. You're going to break well below the lows that you had on their last earnings. Okay, look at the gaps on this chart, man. Uh, and let's back it up even further. Three-year weekly, $80, 83.34. We're going to open at 8. 
eight bucks on Snapchat shares. And uh, jumping around, Snap Earnings, revenue miss, and they have some big problems across the board, man. I was reading about this this morning. Now they have a repurchase program of up to 500 million bucks. It's going to cover 20% of their staff, they said in August. Earnings, eight cents a share uh, versus a small loss. Revenue, they missed by a little bit. Global daily active users, they're over it. But yeah, breaking things down even further, man. Um, it reported a surprise adjusted profit, but their net loss surged 400% to $360 million. They have $155 million restructuring charge in there. Average revenue per user, down 11%. It's an inflationary environment, folks. They are not making money off the people. Daily active users increasing, okay, but they're making less money on those people in this environment. It's going to lay off 20% as we talked about the last quarter. And, yeah, it looks like there's probably even more in there than that. Now, they do have $4.4 billion in cash, which is why they have a repurchase program of $500 million that they're pushing out there. But, nonetheless, Snapchat in big trouble, man, in big trouble in a big way. We jump over to the Analyze tab. For the fundamentals of this company, you're talking about a company creeping at around $10 billion right now. And I imagine they're around in some capacity, folks, but I have actually never understood. And yes, I am in my 40s, so I am not probably the target demographic for Snapchat. Uh, but I do use Snapchat to some capacity. And number one, whenever I see ads on there, boy, I'm just like pressing, mashing that pad to get past those ads as fast as I can, paying literally zero attention to the ads that are being served up to me on the Snapchat platform. Uh, but it is something to use, but in terms of monetizing it, very difficult, I imagine, and this is my perception, from the ads that get played on there versus even the ads that are getting played on apps like Instagram, pretty comparable to Snapchat even, uh, Facebook, et cetera. We're gonna see what happens in this market, folks. Because I don't know what just happened in the currency market, but you had an intervention somewhere on the currencies as the dollar index. Now, on a weekly basis, folks, has anything changed whatsoever on that pullback? And look at this, man. This is going to be remarkable if we uh, if we see a complete move back. You got the markets back into the red. We're going to see some volatility today. That's for sure, man. VIX at 30 could be underpriced, to say the least. So we bounced from about 113 to 130. We're sitting at 113.94 to kick things off. You have the 10-year with some volatility. I mean, we're right back to where you were at 730. You had a sell-off to 108.26, and then you spiked to almost 109.15. You did, and just like that, we sell off 12 points. Keep your fingers fast on the open, folks, and throughout the day, because I imagine it's going to be a quick one in both directions. Remember, it's October 21st, right? We're coming into some big earnings. OK, and we're also coming into we come back on Monday and a lot of the discussion is going to be leading up to the Fed meeting one week from then. It's going to be coming quicker than they, we think, folks. And guess what? After the Fed meeting, what's coming after that? What's coming after that is we get non-farm payrolls for the month of October. We get CPI for the month of October. We get a data stream for the month of October. We just saw how that month went for the month of September, folks, and we saw how it went for the month of August. Look at these markets. Pretty remarkable. Reminding you real quickly as we come into this first break, folks, let's take a look at the S&Ps. Let's put it on a daily. September 13th was when we got the CPI data for August. We were trading at almost 4,200. CPI, not been a fun data point recently, and we all remember that one for the month of September as well. S&P's negative by seven. We got currencies rocking. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by three points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 50. We're trading right at about 11,000 in the NASDAQ 100. You get the Dow negative by eight points right now. It's going to be an interesting open. Whatever do we have going on in currencies, man? You jump over to the dollar index, right? There's some volatility for you, man. You talk about it. Almost to 114, almost to 113. We're back to about 113.30, right where you were at about 5 a.m. Eastern time. And to jump over to yields, we got some moves there as well on whatever just happened coming into nine. Whoops. Do you have my charts? There you go. Forgive me if they lost my charts for a moment. We're back to the 10-year. Uh, we were up to 109.15, and we're sitting at about 109.8. Huge moves in the yields going on there, uh, but really the moves in the currencies, man. The dollar, though, back above 113.31 right now, and we'll see where we go with about 11 minutes to go until the opening bell. And whatever happened, folks, it'd be pretty remarkable if all that buying, whatever just happened, you see the volume that came in right there at about 9 o'clock in the morning as well. Quite an acceleration from 36.55 up to about 36.70. And what we got? We almost got 100,000 contracts. Yeah, let me zoom back here. Yeah, we did. We got 120,000 contracts on the S&Ps at that price point, sending it higher. But guess what? Just like that, you're negative by about 10 points again. And yeah, huge moves in the currencies, uh, excuse me, in the commodities when you talk about the dollar moving. Gold contract back to negative $2. And we got to talk about the dollar yen, man, because this one, I was looking at currencies early this morning. And uh, 152, watch out, folks, man. I don't know what's going on. Maybe that was the Bank of Japan. Maybe that, maybe that was Japan stepping in that, that caused a little bit of haywire in there. Not sure. But we will see in terms of where the day plays out and where this plays out with the S&Ps sitting minus by the 12 points as we get back a lot of that right away. Lower lows and lower highs, folks. You take a look at this thing on a three-year weekly. Let's take off some of this for a little bit of clarity. I'm going to move that one. I'm going to move that one as well. And you know what? Let's get rid of these channel lines because that channel line is far from over, never happening again, not in this uh, year for sure. But where are we, folks? We bounce right off the 50% on the S&P, right? You make it down to a price of about 3502. That 50% that retracement about 3488. We're sitting at 3666. Watch out on the S&Ps. Now you take a look at the NASDAQ. Okay, let's take that one off. For some comparison here, as the NASDAQ's kind of been leading these markets, where are you sitting at? 
How about last week hitting the 618 almost to the tick, man? You make a low, 10,484, the low on my chart. And, yeah, I have to reset it. I mean, it's not exactly, folks, in terms of the low. You can see a 66.28. I pegged it at 66.64, right? The high is a little bit off, so we're ballparking here. And ballparking basically to the tick, man. 10,500 is the 618. Could you imagine if to start this year you were out there preaching – yeah, if anybody knows why that bounce in the market took place, uh, let me know as well, Rahul. I'm not sure either, man. Quite something going on. We may not figure it out until right now. There's buying, man. Maybe there's an intervention of uh, our bank. Maybe, you know, you don't know in terms of where that came from just that quick with the S&P's minus five. But if I had said to you this year that we're going to get a 618 retracement of the 10,000-point run, that we had from 66.28 to 16,767, and we're going to do it all by the end of October, I probably would have seen a lot of skeptics saying it could be that quick and that fast and that furious. But guess what, folks? That is where we are sitting right now. As we are at 11,045, almost to the tick in the S&P. Take a look at the Dow as this market climbs back to basically flat. So the Dow just makes it sitting right at about the 382. So you got the Dow at the 382, you got the S&P at the 50%, and you got the NASDAQ 100 at the 618. That was how it was for a while. Remember when we were sitting there originally uh, for some of those first pullbacks? For instance, the NASDAQ 100 made it to the 382 in March of that pullback. And the S&Ps for a while actually took until June to get to that 382 area. Nonetheless, all the markets are pretty critical areas. Will be interesting to see how this plays out. Whatever happened coming into nine in the morning, man, you put the dollar on a weekly basis, uh, basically a blip as we continue to creep a little bit higher following that acceleration lower, man. We're at 113.35. We've seen the interventions before, folks, in terms of Bank of Japan. There's the Bank of Japan. So much for 151. We're back to 151.64. Short-lived, whatever was going on there. And you take a look at the daily, man. To bring it back, that was the last time we had an intervention in the Bank of Japan. And it could be, man, because that, that, we just traded from 150 to 152. Dollar yen getting out of whack in a big way. I was surprised to even see gold was not down as much as it could have been this morning when you had the yen at 152. Right? You had the yen at 152. Folks, 16 days ago, the yen was at 144, okay? The gold contract was at about 1730. So we have pulled back $100 over that time, I guess. But check out where gold was on September 27th. September 27th is right where we are right now. Well, dollar yen, come on. Was sitting at 144 at that price time. So you, you, making the case that gold could be much worse here, man. Um, you ever get a reversal on some of these currencies, you could see an explosion in that gold contract, man. My dad was doing comparisons, you know, where you bought gold, what you bought it. You bought it in yen. Whew, I mean, hopefully the people in Japan are doing something, man. Probably a little bit too late to do it right now, but you can see why commodities in different parts of the globe, you can see why cryptocurrencies in different parts of the globe, man. When you get the yen getting trashed like this on a daily basis, and pretty remarkable, folks, we got five and a half minutes till the opening bell. And we might give it all back by the time we do, because the way this yen's moving right now, climbing right back up to 152 like nothing, man, we were down to 151. Okay, and we're back to 151.63. Let's see how the dollar index is moving. Dollar index now approaching the 113.40 level. Whatever happened there, folks, we'll see if it lasts. We've seen this happen before and play out in the currencies with the dollar yen. Uh, yields, not as big of a move as in the currencies. Yields right back to where we were, right? Right back to where we were. You did see that acceleration at 730. We saw the acceleration coming into 9 o'clock. They got us all the way up to about 109.15. And right there, we're back at 109.05. It's going to be an interesting day in the markets, folks, when you get this type of volatility. We get the VIX. Almost no movement at all right now with the VIX sitting at 30 as we wait for the open. And you can see where we are in the VIX, a possible double top area. Could easily see that VIX trailing off a bit. Now, where does it trail off to? As in what, what event do we trail off to that then we accelerate higher? I don't know. Maybe we make it through the Fed meeting because we basically know that 75 is coming. Maybe we make it through the Fed meeting and we accelerate. Where do we 
Where do we go into that is the next market scare? Maybe it's the data points I'm talking about. Maybe it's the non-farm payrolls for the month of October. Maybe it's CPI for month of October. They're going to be important data points, folks. Put them on your calendar. I'll pull up the dates when we get back from the break uh, and take a look at them. Because, boy, you want to talk about uh, possible determining factors of how we go. Everything is about the Fed right now, and everything the Fed does is about inflation. And we keep missing in pretty dramatic fashion, whether you're talking about non-farm payrolls, we got too many jobs, we got too much going on in the economy to tame inflation, and CPI is just screaming, hey, these numbers are not denying, and it's so broad. That's the biggest problem I see, folks. It is such a broad spectrum of sectors that are experiencing harsh, in harsh inflation, and then you have the lagging impact of rent. Shelter is 40% of the core CPI. Do you hear that, folks? Shelter is 40% of core CPI. Now, if shelter housing prices collapse, that will matter. Rental prices aren't collapsing, though. That's going to be lagging for a year or two. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. DFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps. They open down about seven points. You have the NASDAQ 100 opens down about 49. We'll see what type of volatility we get right on the open right now. And boy, you talk about some volatility, man, jumping to it. How about Twitter? So it looks like U.S. officials, they're going to make sure that Mr. Musk uh, 
that he can be trusted. If he's doing all this stuff and taking over, you have officials are discussing whether the U.S. should subject some of Elon Musk's ventures to national security views, okay? Now, there's a lot going on in this without saying, stating the obvious, okay, folks? Uh, but here's one thing that caught my eye. So the Starlink satellite service in the Ukraine, right? No private business should have to support the U.S. government-funded satellite operations, that whole deal going on, okay? So there's that. Uh, there was a lot that first came out when said Musk said that SpaceX shouldn't have to support that, that what should happen. The U.S. government should pick that up. Pretty reasonable opinion. Even if you're the richest person in the world or the country, folks, okay? You shouldn't have to do that. That's why the government has the type of budget that it has, okay? But then it comes out that a lot of the were buying those Starlink satellites themselves. They weren't really paying for all of it. So Musk has said that it has cost him $80 million so far. That is a fantastic sum of money, obviously, okay? Uh, Elon Musk is worth about 20, 220, excuse me, billion dollars, okay? Uh, if you just invested that, make an interest, folks, 3%, you're making more than $6 billion a year, okay? If you're making more than $6 billion a year in interest, you're making about $18 million a day in risk-free interest. So what that means, folks, okay, is that Elon, I mean, it's just such a large sum of money for him to talk about this. Anyway, you know, it puts the wealth that they have in context there, folks. It really does. Uh, if I had $220 billion, uh, I wouldn't be worrying about $80 million. So, so to put it in context one more, let's say you have a million-dollar net worth, okay? million dollars doesn't do today what it used to, okay? But let's say you got a million dollars net worth. Let's say somebody's sitting there and they're saying they're worth a million dollars, your friend, they're sitting next to you, and they're complaining that they've had to spend $333 to provide satellite service to the entire country of Ukraine as the country is under siege from Putin and Russia. Because that is what $80 million is to somebody like Elon Musk, who is worth $220 billion. That is like somebody who is a millionaire sitting next to you complaining that they're spending $330 of their wealth to provide satellite service to the Ukraine. Okay, Now, that is what Elon said. I don't even think that that's what's going on. Okay, Because if that's what Elon said, it's probably some far place from the truth uh, of there. But you got to keep that stuff in context, man, because I imagine if many people... Um, you people out there, my the, the fine people that tune into TFNN, the great tigers and tigresses in the den, you know, to, to you don't become the richest person in the world, folks, by giving it away. I get that. And he uses a lot of that wealth for great things in terms of technology and, and pushing mankind forward. OK, but you got to keep it in context, folks. And so when I saw that, I said, yeah, why not, man? I want to make sure because that tweet that he sent out talking about Russia and Ukraine and yes, you know, risks of nuclear war going forward. And this brings it back to the market, folks. All right. You don't think this brings it back to the market. We try and keep politics out of it. We try and keep the market into it. Well, that's where they converge. OK, that's the type of price action you get. Now, you could say the market and rightfully so overreacted potentially down to forty three ninety one. Maybe it's just a review. I don't imagine they're going to clamp it down on Elon and allow him not to buy any more companies as the richest person in the world. But a review I'm fine with, man, because, you know, $80 million, folks, you're worth $220 billion. It's the same thing as somebody who's got a million bucks talking about 300 bucks burning a hole in their pocket when they could provide satellite service to the entire of Ukraine out there. So, saying your piece. Twitter, down 4.6% today. We've got the markets, a little bit of volatility on the open, back to the action. There's your opening bell bar. We're up to 36.75, down to 36.55 right now. They were talking about in the den, potentially the news uh, 75 basis points is the hike and then pause and reflect Wall Street Journal. They seem to always got the in in terms of what's happening at the Fed. I could see why that would send the market higher up initially. I could see why I don't think I would agree because guess what, folks, there was probably about a 99 percent chance that they were going to come with 75. The pause and reflect. I don't know if I buy that one. Who's saying pause and reflect, man? Um. You can't pause and reflect when you're getting these types of, types of CPI numbers, folks. That is not the type of confidence. We just got a, a bang-out CPI print 
uh, for the month of September. We're coming up on a month of October. And if you think that they're going to pause after they go 75, then yeah, I would be buying this market. But I wouldn't be buying this market on that news because I don't think that's what's going to happen. You could make a much more reasonable case that maybe they're going to go 50, maybe they're going to go 25. I do not believe that they are going to go from 75, 75, 75, 75, CPI, not even showing basically impact, and then they're going to pause. I can't imagine that's how it's going to happen. The market might lose confidence completely if that's what they do. Maybe things accelerate even more. We'll see how it plays out. s and P's right now down about a quarter percent. Yeah, and that's a great point. So it's costing the shareholders, not just him directly. And that's a great point, Jimmy, for SpaceX tying it back to Elon. But guess what? That's what Elon said. I don't even believe that's what's happening because the stories that came out originally, uh, and I'll try and find some of them as we tease this, were that a lot of those Starlink satellites were actually purchased by other people or nonprofits or people in the Ukraine as well. And so if Elon's saying it cost him 80 million, how much do you really think it cost him, Jimmy? Well, guess what? Less than 80 million, not more. Right. He's not going to say it cost him 80 when it cost him 100. Uh, he likes to be grandiose in some of the things he says. And 80 million dollars. Yeah. Like I started it off saying no private company should have to pay for the government. Zero dollars is what really they should have to pay for. But everything is a half truth with him lately. And uh, yeah. So, you know, it is important to understand that wealth, though, for that level, because. Yeah, for obvious reasons. S&P's climb back to flat. Let's take a look at some of the dollar action as we chop around. Dollar index, back to that 113 level right there. Yeah, everything gets political, right? Here they come. Um, NASDAQ down by 41, folks, and we jumped dollar index at 113.06. And I don't think, Fletch, as you're going to go off, that, that Elon, okay, I'll take issue with this one, is not paying for the war effort on the government's behalf. So let's check the verbiage if we're going to talk about it in that degree. Because somehow he gets championed as the conservative messiah these days. And he is not paying for the war effort. He's paying for part of it. Yeah. In an ulterior universe, maybe. He's providing satellite coverage for PR. Do you know how much PR he's probably gotten off that, Fletch? How much do you think? Do you think he's gotten $80 million? Right? You want to have the conversation, man? Let's go. Do you think he's gotten $80 million of press? Do you think he's gotten $80 million of press, Fletch? I know you're listening. Do you think he's gotten $80 million of press? Exactly. Crickets. 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 Crude up to 85.40 on that. And let's jump to the VIX as we jump around this morning. 30.05. <laughs> Folks, you got to call things like you see it, okay? Elon's getting treated right now in the Tiger's Den like he is some kind of gift giver providing payment for the war when his verbiage alone, okay, if you ever lived in Ukraine and you're the richest person in the world out there saying just let the people vote whether Putin has taken over their land and now they'll be Russian. It's amazing how the conversation shifts so quick from reality. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the VIX right now, trading at 3018. We get the S&Ps negative by 11 points. We trade right to the lower consolidation area we've been in as we dip slightly below. I mean, look at this volatility we got right on the open. We make it to 3655. We're right now climbing towards that area. NASDAQ negative by 82 points right now at 11,010. We jump over the Dow negative by 49. Let's take a look at some of the stocks that are rocking today. Snapchat, how about 30% to the downside, man? Kaboom. Uh, you talk about a move, Snapchat, down $3.24, and boy, how far do you got to go back, man? COVID lows, we're below that level, folks. You got to go back to $4.82. We're basically coming into the beginning of 2019 for Snapchat, up to $83.34 on this equity. Let's see how some of the other uh, social media companies are trading. Facebook. Probably having to do with Snapchat, right? Let's see on the short-term basis. Yeah, they're, they're reacting to Snapchat news as well. Facebook, Meta, down 3.7%. You know, I was watching uh, one of my friends sent a clip today about, I think it's the new Modern Warfare 2, one of the video games, and it was in Amsterdam. And boy, the images are so lifelike. And I was saying, can you imagine, folks? Now, video games have really come to fruition basically over the last about 40 years, right? You think the early 80s? Um, I was born 1980, man. I was in the heyday of the early, early video games. Pong, uh, Atari, and you got Nintendo, excuse me, coming over there. 40 years, right? Now, we had computers coming in before then. So you could even go from the beginning of computers for the technological advances we've experienced, but just video games. If you think over the last 30 or 40 years, because computers, you got to go back a ways, because you could argue that a, a television is a computer to some degree. Not, nothing like we have right now, right? Let, let's just stick with video games, though, okay? We now have virtual reality headsets that are going to be coming with virtual reality suits. We view things in, what, 4K, 8K. We view things in so many pixelations that our eyes almost can't even see the pixels that are present in a 3D virtual reality manner. We've done that in a period of about 40 years, 30 to 40 years from literally nothing, looking at a computer screen that has 16, 24 pixels, something like that, right, to looking at a 3D virtual reality headset that has you so submerged submerged in the reality that it can trick your brain into losing balance, et cetera. We've done it all in 30 or 40 years, folks. Well, guess what? Time, time is on such a longer spectrum that 40 years is basically a blink of an eye. And yeah, these deep fake videos, man, everything is going to be deep fake. You're never going to be able to believe a video yet again, folks. You want to see some deep fake videos, go online. 60 Minutes, I think, did a great story on these recently talking about it. Uh, it's all going to come there. Now, 
40 years is nothing, right? So what happens, I mean, imagine, my son was just born uh, less than two years ago, in the year 2021, okay? Uh, he'll be less than 80 years old in the year 2100. I mean, I know that that's, he's, he's one year old right now, he's almost 80, but imagine where technology is gonna be, folks. Uh, we are living and in an exceptional time, and it's very difficult to imagine it. Now, sometimes things are slower than you imagine, as in the change that you expect. Self-driving cars is a great example. That last mile of technology, very difficult to overcome sometimes, but we will get there, okay? Uh, Amazon bought Whole Foods like five years ago. Nothing has changed, pretty much, right? So t some things are quicker than others, but over the longer term scale, it is very hard to imagine the technology is not going to take us over and we're all going to be living in a sci-fi movie at some point in the future, man. And meta, virtual reality, I'm not so sure they're going to be the winner because you can spend money on this forever. That's the other scary part, right? We're close, but we're so far away. It was almost the same thing for self-driving cars that you could have probably said five or ten years ago, right? They, they, they would have said, well, we're close. You know, if you can put us on a field where we can't kill anybody and we go through obstacles, I think we could do a pretty good job. But you have to be almost infallible. And virtual reality, it's going to be that last leg that somebody can literally slip onto a suit, put on a headset, and not be able to tell sometimes whether you're literally in reality or virtual reality. But you look at some of the graphics coming right now, folks, it's pretty wild. Because this Modern Warfare 2, maybe I'll see if I can pull it up to get some glimpses. I don't think it's going to be as fantastic as just viewing it. But I'll post, you know what, I'll post a link to it in the Tiger's Den is what I'll do. So you can pull up yourself. If you've ever been to Amsterdam, folks, it just looked like uh, you're looking at beautiful Amsterdam and those beautiful canals walking through the city. Pretty remarkable. Uh, I digress. But boy, you put things on a time scale, even a humanity scale standpoint, folks, we're talking about 40 years is the blink of an eye. Time operates in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not hundreds of millions, if not billions of years. You see some of those web telescope. You know what? I'm going to find, that's what I'll do. I'll find some web telescope images for the next break because, boy, if you aren't seeing those, folks, that's what it's all about. Uh, space. Space travel, the universe, it's just remarkable. You know what else is remarkable, folks? This market, higher we go, 36.92 right now on the S&P. Uh, maybe we just got a little A to B, C to D. The A point, right as we came onto the air, 36.42, up to almost 36.90. What is that? That's a solid 45, 46, 47 S&P points. And yeah, we almost got it. Check that out. So maybe that's the completion of the A to B, C to D, man. Your A point, like I said, about 36.42. You climb up to about 36.90, so you're talking about what? 48 S&P points. We go from 36.55, not quite there. We wouldn't need to get about a few points higher out on that move. We almost make it to 3,700 right now. Let's see how some of the big dogs are trading. Apple shares, there's a pop for you. They're up half a percent right now, 144.12. Amazon is flat at 1. 15.20 this morning, we jump over to Microsoft shares, they're flat, we jump to Google, I was talking about YouTube yesterday, man, Google down about 8 tenths percent, NASDAQ barely in the red, but we got the S&P, Dow, and the Russell all in positive territory, let's see how the dollar is trading on the open, back to about 113, you take that whole move off, so be interesting if that was the news, folks, haven't read it, was that the news, can somebody else confirm, anybody else got any takes in there in the den in terms of what happened, was that some kind of a journal report about the Fed, are they really going to pause? I don't even care if that's the news, folks. They're not pausing. Yeah, I see nothing. They're not pausing. If people tell you that, man, um, maybe the data would say that, okay? You get 75 basis points in the November meeting, and you get a non-farm payroll number, and you get a CPI print for the month of October that surprises dramatically to the downside, you could make that case. You can't make that case right now. The only case you can make is that we're going to listen to the data and go forward, and that's pretty much what Chairman Powell has said. Uh, but boy, we got some action in currencies one way or the other dollar back to about 113. You got a gold contract. There's a bid for you up to 16.44. And let's jump to the dollar yen. See how we're trading right now. 115.40. That's the, no matter what happens with the dollar, man. Dollar yen is just so weak right now in dramatic fashion. We jump over to the euro. Euro US dollar about 97, 98 almost. We're up a full point from the euro US dollar. <coughs> Excuse me. And we jump over to the volatility index. As this market plows higher, we got a 29 handle in the VIX right now. Let's jump back to that VIX as we come into this break. 
Yeah, somebody's buying, no matter what's happened, right, folks? Uh, we break to 29.67. Those recent lows from October 5th, about 28.54. But lower lows in that volatility index as we get some positive action on Friday, folks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll take a look at what else we have going on in the market. And yeah, I'm going to pull up those web web uh, telescope images of the universe. If you haven't checked them out, folks, stay tuned. Just check them out either way. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, welcome back. And we got the S&Ps moving higher. Say goodbye to 3,700. We're higher, folks, by 27 points in the S&P. And keep in mind, we were in negative territory at about 9 in the morning, man. You are 60, 60 S&P points above where you were trading at about 9 a.m. this morning. NASDAQ 100, you make it into the green up by 35. That's a third of a percent. The Dow positive by 9 tenths percent right now. Russell positive by 8. Crude up about 80 pennies right now. Gold up about $9. Folks, if you haven't checked out Teddy Cake Stats, Tiger Forex report, great time to do it. You're seeing the action that you have coming in in terms of the dollar index down to 113, a full point movement. That's impacting a lot that's going on in that market. You see what a strong dollar, right? When the dollar's up to 114, this market was getting hammered. You pull back to 113, the market's in positive territory. Here's the only thing I will say, folks. 
Dollar is only back to where it was yesterday at the close. So we're higher, but all you are is back to where you were yesterday at the close right now at 112.98. And we jump over to yields, a little bit of a reprieve there as well. And you talk about volatility, man. The 10 years up almost a full, what is that? 18, 19, 20 ticks almost from where you're at. And I said we were gonna talk about it, folks. Let's talk about a little bit of the universe and let's talk about the pillars of creation. Creation. You remember reading about these in physics, man? Uh, pillars of creation is, is as they're dubbed. So the Hubble photographed them 30 years ago. They've updated some of those pictures, but here's the new uh, web space telescope image, folks, of the pillars of creation. You put them side by side. That's what the Hubble versus where we are right now. Now, the pillars of creation, now check out, the Hubble did have one in 2014, okay? And you can see some of the interstellar going on behind it. But you talk about operating in the span of years, thousands of years, etc. Okay, now check out this part. Images taken by another telescope discovered hot dust, okay, that they think was from a supernova. The appearance suggests that they could have been destroyed some 6,000 years ago. But guess what? They're 7,000 light years away. So this means that we'll be able to see that in a thousand years from right now is when that would happen, that the pillars of creation already were destroyed some 6,000 years ago, but it's 7,000 light years away. I could spend all show on it. Pretty cool, folks. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Thanks for tuning in, starting your Friday with me. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to man Basil Chapman. We'll be right back, folks. Have a great Friday, everybody.